So today I am here to tell you about the movies that I saw in the month of January. January ended up being a crazy month and I saw a ton in the theaters. There were some weeks that I went to a movie every single day, which is crazy, but there you go. So I'm going to go through these pretty quickly and some of them I reviewed on the channel, some of them I reviewed on my blog, some of them I reviewed on both. Make sure you're following them up my blog because sometimes I don't have time to do a video here and you want to check that out. The first movie that I saw in the month of January was Joy. This was David O. Russell's movie with Jennifer Lawrence, Bradley Cooper, uh, Robert De Niro, a whole bunch of his returning players from many of his films. Uh, this movie has some tonal problems. There's characters that don't feel believable. It's very, very over the top and sort of the, the crazy family antics and like the bad things that can happen to this woman. Uh, it's about Joy who invented the Miracle Mop. I, I did like it though. I liked her story. I liked the performance that Jennifer Lawrence was really good. And overall it was an enjoyable film even if it's not a favorite of mine. And I saw The Good Dinosaur in theaters again. Loved that. I still think it's the most underrated film of 2015. It's beautiful. It's an emotional story. I love Arlo and Spot. I just think it's a lot better than most people. So there you go. What I saw was Carol. And this is directed by Todd Haynes, starring Kate Blanchett, Runa Mari. I got a lot of Oscar buzz, but it didn't end up getting nominated. The performances did, and they are deserving. This is about a uh, lesbian relationship in the 50s. Um, the only problem I had with it is I didn't feel like they had really very good chemistry. I didn't really see why Rooney Mara's character was attracted to Carol. I didn't quite get it. Uh, but it's, it's very well made. Uh, the cinematography is very strong. The costuming, the acting is, is, is good. Uh, but I don't know, there's something that the chemistry was missing for me. And it is very much a slow burn. And there is one scene that is pretty strong as far as a, a, a sexual content. So just beware. But the film that I saw was The Revenant. Uh, this was a film I reviewed on my blog, so you want to check out that review. And this was an amazing, stunning experience. It was incredible to watch as far as the bear attack and just the journey that the Leonardo DiCaprio character goes on. But I did find it kind of deadening by the end. It did feel a little repetitive by the end because you just kind of have the same thing happen over and over and over again. And I felt like there needed to be a a few moments of humanity to kind of let me breathe a little bit with the characters and overall though I, I thought it was worth seeing and I'm glad I saw the cinematography by Manuel Lebesky was incredible. Only a lot better than last year's Birdman in my opinion by Inaritu. Next film I want to talk about is called Snowtime. This I was able to see at the Sundance Film Festival. I was able to be a special representative of rotoscopers.com and it was such a neat experience I was able to go and not only see the film at Sundance, my first time going to Sundance even though I live in Utah, I found out about Sundance Kids. So cool, I'm totally gonna go next year. But anyway, I found out and I went and saw the movie. It's so sweet, it's so simple. It's a lot like the Peanuts movie, so if you like that, I think you'll really like Snow Time. It's just about kids and playing together and learning uh, to get along and learning from different experience, life experiences. So it's really, really cute and the, the animation for $12 million is pretty remarkable. So check out my interview. I'll put a link down to my interview on rotoscopers.com and my review on their website. I would love to get some more feedback on there because like, I haven't gotten very many comments or people reading the interview. So I would love it if you guys check that out for me. I, for, I'm starting a series on my blog where it's called the Blind Spot series where each month I review a movie that's considered a classic that I've never seen before. And this month, it's just so happened, I was able to do Blade Runner, Ridley Scott's Blade Runner, and I had never seen it and it was actually on the big screen. That was really cool. And it's a film noir detective story set in the future. And to be honest, for the first like 35, 40 minutes, I was not liking it very much because I did not understand it. I didn't get what was going on. It was too confusing. And and so finally out of sort of frustration because I was like, I need to figure out this movie because I could tell it was brilliant, but I just couldn't figure out what was going on. And so I went into the hallway and I literally read the Wikipedia plot summary. And, and then after that, I enjoyed it so much more. So it just goes to show that sometimes, you know, some people would say, oh, how could you do that? You're spoiling it. But for me, it made a much more pleasant experience. So you just have to make the movie going experience work for you. And it doesn't matter what works for other people. It, it's what made it more pleasant for me. So there. Uh, then I saw Star Wars Force Awakens again. And fifth time, 
now and I loved it. I just love that movie. I think it's so much fun. I think it's one of the best blockbusters I've seen in the last couple of years. Then I saw Norm of the North and you'll remember my review of that on this channel. It was one of the worst animated films I've ever seen. The less that's said of it, the better. It is awful. There's really, like, Rob Schneider is the best thing about that movie and that's saying something. Honestly, you're just like embarrassed for everyone involved. Like, it's that bad. Then I saw Boy in the World, the Academy Award nominated film. It is from Brazil and it is a simple story about a boy whose father goes to get work. He's unemployed. The father goes to the city to get work. The boy follows his father and just the things he sees on the way. It's done in a sketch style, in a stick figure kind of style. Uh, it's The music is really, really beautiful. The samba music and the way it integrates with the graphics is very, very lush and beautiful. I did find at certain points it was a little self-indulgent at times and I felt like the end was the messaging at the end was very heavy-handed uh, in you know industrialism and and commerce and everything like that i have a review of that film on this channel i still think uh, that I, I think it's worthy of the nomination but i personally think that the peanuts movie was just as artistically ambitious and to me it was a more enjoyable experience i saw the fifth wave i did a review on this channel and this was a drab dreary brutal dystopian young adult a book turned into a movie and I just thought it was not good I didn't like it I <laughs> it didn't really have anything that I really liked I thought some performances were earnest and they were trying but it I thought the special effects looked really cheesy it's just so brutal with people dying all over the place and the, the aliens are very like murky murkily drawn in, in the sense you don't really know who they are, what they're looking for. And there's just no like spirit of fun. Like if you're trying to do like an Independence Day kind of film, like with alien invaders, you know, and stuff like that had Will Smith, that had some fun in it. And this is just blah. Next is The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. This is another classic film that I was able to see on the big screen. And I knew nothing about this film except for that Humphrey Bogart and that it was supposedly a classic. And I loved this movie. And you know, what was so interesting is that it had many of the same elements of the Revenant. <laughs> it's about a man uh, in the sort of old west, and in this case, it's it's very hot in Mexico. In the Revenant, it's very cold, uh, but they're all, they're kind of brutal. And it's about greed and revenge, and and you know really harsh circumstances, and they're very they're not that different. But I think that the Treasure of the Sierra Madre is better in every single way. I think the direction by John Huston is beautiful. The cinematography is beautiful with the black and white and the lighting and the shadows and everything is so pretty. I think the way that it sort of builds these characters going from being these relatively moral creatures because it's in it's at the heart of a moral story about about how they make one compromise and one compromise and one compromise and one compromise till they're doing these incredibly horrible things because of greed and because of the curse of the gold. Next was The Finest Hours. This was a Disney film about the Coast Guard rescue in 1952 of 32 sailors that when a uh, oil tanker got split in half basically because of a storm. Chris Pine, Chris Pine has to go out on this little boat and save these 32 men and it has some good special effects, it has some weak special effects, it has mostly pretty good performances. I did not like Holiday Granger as the girlfriend. I thought they used her too much and I just something about her just annoyed me. Uh, Eric Bana also has a really really lame southern accent but he's fine in the role, just the accent is bad. Uh, some of the pacing was a little bit off but Casey Affleck is really good. I thought overall it's a it's an entertaining inspirational story. You could put it on on Sunday and and have like a, a pretty good Sunday movie viewing. It's not like spectacular, but it's entertaining. Then the final movie that I saw in January is Kung Fu Panda 3 and I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. I thought the animation was stunning. I thought it blended the elements of Kung Fu Panda 1 as far as the humor and some of those things that were strong. Uh, and the action of Kung Fu Panda 2, which was also really, really strong, and it combined them together in a way that I found really, really satisfying. I loved the adoption message. I loved the two fathers trying to figure out how to work together to help their son. I liked that a lot. I thought that the villain was actually really cool, and him, him gathering all of the 
I am gathering the chi of all of the masters and then being able to use that to strengthen himself, I thought was really good. And so, yeah, I, I really loved it. I thought it was great. So that is my movies I saw in the month of January. Whew, kind of crazy. I didn't even feel like I saw that many, but there it is. Uh, so what did you see in January? Put in the comments section uh, what you saw, what you liked, what you didn't like, and uh, let's talk. So thanks so much. Make sure to check out that blog and that Rotoscopers article. And uh, thanks so much. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you later. Bye.